Okay, brilliant. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start then because I believe it is uh, one minute now past half past seven. So anybody that's not on, um, tough, I suppose, in the nicest possible way. So I can also hear myself, so I need to mute the apps a lot better. So what I'm going to do then is start with uh, showing you some slides and I promise you there is 11. So we're not going to be having a massive slideshow, but I want to just go through uh, a, a few different things and I'll, I'll flick in and out of um, a few different windows as well. So this webinar is all about the best use of technology and recruitment. Now, what I mean by this is not necessarily what's the latest technology we can use. It's not what's the, the most advanced. This is about what works for technology. So what I want to start by saying is it is not always the best solution. And this was some, this is something that will come up towards the end of the uh, the webinar. However, um, it is something that I am personally passionate about, as I'm sure a lot of you know, but sometimes technology for technology's sake will slow us down and hinder the process and won't actually make us better at our jobs. So ultimately, have a look at everything in this with an open mind. If it works for you and it works for your business, brilliant, but don't do it just for the sake of doing it. Really have a think about what that's going to help in your process. So I want to start really now with some of the old classics. So sorry to bore everybody straight away with this, but Excel, so some excellent ideas, if you see what I did there. So I won't show you examples of these. We've all seen these MI reports, a commission tracker, some pretty graphs if you need to send them to your clients. Don't underestimate how good Excel can be for this. This is something which is a very powerful tool. It is not a database, um, but it can be used for a lot of different things. And there's not necessarily a need to invest in some of the more advanced things such as click view and, and other areas but there's one thing the reason i brought up excel is for one thing that few people know about and that is a live data feed so what i'm going to show you now is an example i'm going to use an example that someone sent across to me to, to help them with the other day now this is um a way of using excel to track information that is online so to show you this in here for example uh this is a website which shows all the latest uh, jobs for various different organizations at the moment in the southwest so we're looking at amuso over here that have got a developer role based in bournemouth for example now there are people that would want to check this website and probably check 10 20 30 other websites for any new jobs on a daily basis and ultimately spend a lot of time doing this so the one trick here to show you is that if i copy this web address up here once i find it so I just go into here, I copy, I go back into my Excel spreadsheet. This is now a very simple solution. All you have to do is go and click data. And then you from data, you click from web. And then it will load this up. Now you only need to worry about the basic. Don't worry about the advanced settings. You paste your link into here and you click OK. It's as simple as this. And then a little pop up should come up here. And there's two options. It's very clear which one I need. And I just click from here load and now what this is currently doing is creating a live feed between excel and that website so now as you can see i've got a live feed of all the jobs are on that website and at any time i can click my little refresh button here and it will refresh that feed so you can set this up onto absolutely any website whatsoever in the world that has got a table that has got a table in it and it will bring that table through and that's pretty much every website out there so um let me just quickly jump onto here to make sure uh, there's no questions, which there isn't. Brilliant. So the next thing that I want to jump onto is another old classic, and I promise this is the last one, but it's something which we all use, we've all got access to, and we should all be using better. And that's Outlook. And this is just one more thing about optimizing what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, something that's important in recruitment is the data that we have is more often than not lost. So what I mean by this is, and I'll show you my outlook in a minute, I think we've probably all got the same setup where we've got about 30, 40, 50 plus folders. Each of those folders maybe have 100, 200 CVs. Now, when I first joined the business I'm in right now, we actually had over 60,000 CVs in Outlook folders that were unsearchable, unusable data. Um, this was obviously a bit of a nightmare when it came to uh, resourcing in any, any new jobs. So... What I've got, and I, I searched and I managed to find, and I, again, on our forum, I will show you the, the links on where to download this, and I will be happy to talk anyone through how to put this onto their Outlook in a bit more detail. But the first thing I want to show you here is a 
Outlook add-in that I've got or a macro I've got that can extract all of these CVs for me in one go. So if I go into my digital CVs folder and I select everything I've got in here, I've got a handy little macro up here, which is execute saving. I click that and it will allow me now to select uh, any folder that I want. I've got one for ease called AAA and I'll click OK. What this now does, it will look like it's going to crash for a minute, but then it will fix itself. What this is currently doing is going through every single email in this folder. And where that's going to is into my documents and into here. And you can now see all of these CVs have been extracted into, uh, into our documents here, which is great. And now what this means is I can upload this. I can, I can search from here, which is very slow. I can upload on bulk to our CRM or whatever way you've got to do it. This has now become searchable, searchable, actionable data. But there's one thing that we still haven't got, and that is the content that is within those emails. So uh, one thing that I think we can all agree is important is if you've having a conversation with a candidate by email, maybe there's 10, 20 different lines in there. That's, that's data that you're going to want. That might have keywords in it. You might have background on that candidate. So the other thing that we've got is this cool little add-in here. So I click export on this. And, and once again, I, I, I will in the form create links to this. So don't worry about remembering all this is. What I can do from here is I can select any fields that I want from here. I have just to make this quick, got attachment name, subject, body, and the date that email was received. I choose where I want to save that to. I'm going to choose this file here and click export. Now this has gone through every single email that I've got there and extracted all the information. So if I now go back into that folder that we were just in, I can open up my Excel file here. Now, the reason that this is becoming important is you can see if I expand all my fields, the subject line of the email and here is the body. Now, because I've only selected the first 256 characters, there's nothing really important in there. But what I've now got is for any CV, any email that had an attachment, so these are all CVs, I can now see the notes and the attachment name. Now, the important thing there is that's created a link between this attachment name here and the attachment name in here. So when we upload to our database, it can pick up and it can recognize those notes go against that candidate, if that makes sense. I hope I'm not losing anybody there. Um, I'm happy to talk through in more detail with anybody, but it's um, a very good way of using some very basic techniques and very basic tools uh, to make the most of your, what was otherwise unusable data. And like I said, we found 65,000 CVs that way that had been unused over the last eight years. And it's generated a lot of, uh, well, quite frankly, a lot of cash for us uh, ever since we've done that. So that, that's kind of the end of the uh, boring tech, I suppose. So that's the end of what I suppose we all know about. So I want to talk a little bit now about some newer tech. So the first one's not too new. I'm sure a few of us already know about it, but about social media. So there's a couple of tools that I personally use in social media. They are Buffer App and Hootsuite. There are lots of alternatives, so research anything you want to. They, I can, I'm happy to point you in the direction of different uh, platforms as well. Um, what these basically do is allow instant sharing and uh, scheduling of posts to your social media accounts. That's what Buffer App does, and Hootsuite works in tandem as it allows you to track responses to your posts uh, across all your platforms, such as LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Uh, but it also allows you to interact with and speak to your customers candidates and clients through there as well so uh, rather than having to log in individually to each profile to, to respond you can see from one place uh, all your responses and manage it from there but to show you how good buffer app actually is once you've got the link you just go on to let's say i found this article here about the guy that recommended we all reset our passwords every 90 days and turns out we shouldn't um, click this little thing here this little button and it will immediately bring up this screen for me. Now I'm able to, uh, I've only got my LinkedIn on here, uh, but you can add, like I said, lots of social media profiles, as many groups and everything else that you want to as well. Uh, I can edit anything I want to, I can change the picture, I can change what's being said here, I can change this bit here. And what this allows me to do is to add to the queue. So this means if I've set there to be 10 posts to LinkedIn in a week and they happen at 10 a.m. and 3 p.m., it will go to the back of the queue uh, to go onto one of those posts or I can say share it as the next scheduled one, or I can click to share now. So if I click share now, that will now be instantly shared on my LinkedIn account. And like I said, I can then use Hootsuite to interact with the people that decide to comment, like, or share that post as well. So that's a good way of optimizing what we do. Yeah.
Um, I'm just going to fly through that a little bit because I do feel like a lot of us probably know this, but to those of us that aren't using this, um, this is something I feel you should be getting on board with um, and, and definitely download and, and, and use. So please contact me if you don't know how to do that. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about false promises. So the reason I want to bring this up is the way customer satisfaction and candidate satisfaction is measured is changing in the industry. So there was once upon a time we used something called NPS or Net Promoter Score. This would uh, track how happy someone was with you. It would track the likelihood that they're going to recommend you and their loyalty to your brand. So this was a great thing to, to use once upon a time. However, it is now widely uh, accepted in the customer satisfaction world that it's not about the net promotion, net promoter score, how likely they are to recommend you. It's all about net easy. And this is how easy an interaction is with your brand. Now, this is where technology becomes a sensitive subject in recruitment. So there are a lot of platforms out there, and I'm sure we've all seen the, the ugly ATS systems that are used by big businesses, especially blue chip organizations. The public sector loves them. And we've got about 100 forms to fill out on 20 different pages, and we just copy and paste our CV, basically. Um, that's an example of technology not working for recruitment, and there are lots of examples of this. So what I wanted to really point out was uh, customers do not want to log on and update their information. You will notice a lot of self-service options now coming up in our industry and coming up in other industries. Now this works really well in Tesco's. This works really well when I want to order my new debit card. It doesn't order work so well when I want to update my CV. So if I want to update my CV uh, on job site, I've got to log into job site to do it. And then I've got to do it on job serve, on total jobs, on monster. And then suddenly I've now got to log into each individual recruiter's uh, ATS system to update my CV as well. I'm just not going to do it. It's, it's not going to happen. So we really need to have a better approach. So this is where technology does not work for a candidate in this instance, but we need to make the technology work for us so that the candidate doesn't have to do anything, thereby making their interaction with us easy. So I've brought this bit up here now to talk about CRM systems because this is going to be uh, something that's important. So an intuitive system here that I've been speaking about will check social media profiles and update your system automatically. So an intuitive uh, CRM, you can actually have a, with a connection to a LinkedIn profile is always a good example, but others will work as well. What this will mean is every time you go onto that candidate's record, you can see their latest social media profiles, which in essence is actually um, updating their records automatically for you but the most intuitive ones can go one step further than this and this will be where we've all heard of watchdogs before and we all know what a watchdog is i'm sure where you can get a job board uh, to monitor for new cvs or you can get a job board to monitor for new jobs and they send you emails automatically which is great however using an intuitive crm or ats even some of them do it, we can actually set up a watchdog for all social media profiles. So Broadbean is a good example of this. They have watchdogs you can set up on Stack Overflow, GitHub, LinkedIn, and you can have those CVs automatically sent to you as and when they are updated or profiles sent to you as and when they are updated or new ones come in. What we can then do is set up a link from our Outlook into our CRM, um, and I'm going to talk about this in a minute, that will automatically update that candidate's profile as well. So suddenly uh, that candidate updates their, C updates their CV on any, any board, any social media profile, and we receive that automatically and they don't have to interact with us. So just to really try to get to the crux of what I mean by this, traditional technology now this is how recruitment has probably worked up till date we've all got a way of posting jobs whether that be uh, sending a letter to the local newspaper or it be logging on to job sites and posting a job or sending a social media update we've then also all got our ways of searching cvs some of us may be still searching outlook some of us may be in a filing cabinet some of us may be using uh, a decent crm or some of us using an ATS like Broadbean as well, which has got that kind of function. Um, we've all got a CRM or a database. Again, some people may be using Outlook folders. Some such as us use Firefish, others use iSIMS. There's lots of different options and an ATS to track where our candidates are in each stage of the recruitment process and who's applied from where, et cetera, et cetera. What traditionally this was four different systems to do four different things. However, in this day and age now, in modern tech is where we have one tool. And this one tool should be something that's called omni-channel and not multi-channel. So this is really the, the last point I want to make, but it's probably the most important one is what the difference between those two things are. 
So multi-channel would imply you've got more than one channel of communication or you've got more than one channel of interacting with your business. So for example, searching for CVs, uh, we're multi-channel searchers, we, we do different searches on different boards, uh, we, we do social media searches and candidates can contact us in a multi-channel way. They could use email, they could use SMS, some of us use live chat uh, and the majority of us probably use a mobile phone. So, uh, sorry, or a, or a landline. So what multi-channel would mean is no matter what platform they're using uh it is interacting with us and being picked up in the same way and put into the same system so to go back to here if they apply to one of the jobs we posted or if they come up in a cv search or if they were already on our crm or if they've been picked up in an ats they will automatically be put into um the, the systems that we have so i'm probably explaining this in a bit of a bad way but i want to explain what i mean so when we post a job, we don't want to be posting a job to job site, then to job serve, and then to monster. We should be using uh, an aggregator, something like Broadbean. But unless Broadbean is integrated directly with our CRM, it becomes a hindrance to the process and, and not one that speeds it up. So as long as all our systems are, are integrated, then we do have a true omni-channel solution. So I want to just kind of show you one example of this and, and nothing more really is in here, for example, this is my Broadbean account. Uh, like I said, different options available. I could search for C Sharp within 30 miles of Bristol, let's say. Now, when I click search here, this has now come up immediately on job site. Great, but I can also now search my LinkedIn. And then what I can now do is I can have these sent directly to my inbox. And those, because they've gone into my inbox, will automatically go onto my CRM. So that's through something called Firefish, which supports it. So if your uh, current provider doesn't support Omnichannel, this is a conversation you need to be having with them. You need to ask them if they plan to support Omnichannel, or if not, you maybe do need to be searching for a new provider. So this is probably the part of the webinar I'm talking badly about, and quite frankly, it's because I, I feel like I'm about to throw up, so I am sorry. But um, so I'm gonna kind of leave things there. I hope you all understand a little bit, and hopefully this last bit's not been too, complicated but it'd be great to open up now to any questions you guys might have um about technology there's a lot more that i can cover but i wanted to try and do a quick overview of a few different things that i use that personally makes my life easier and i know has been proven to make our business uh more money so it'd be great i'm going to go on to the youtube thing now so you guys are going to have a really weird image where you're going to see the same video a hundred times in a row um but please now fire away on this chat if you have any questions at all for me 